I fought for my country, I've served, I've built, and I'll go from the hills to the hollows, from the cities to the suburbs, to the loneliest town on the quietest street, to take our message of hope and growth for every American, to every American. I will keep America moving forward, always. George H.W. Bush was empathetic, very personable, selfless, courageous, patriotic, compassionate, very wise, and bold. He was one of the boldest people I knew. He was not afraid to make big decisions. I take as my guide the hope of a saint. In crucial things, unity. In important things, diversity. In all things, generosity. What George and Barbara Bush did at the pinnacle of power, that's a case study in just do the right thing. And the Bushes were remarkably good at that. Georgia Barbara Bush Foundation, first and foremost, we promote and protect the legacies of President and Mrs. Bush. And I think the ideals and values that they stood for are more relevant today than they've ever been. I think future generations need to understand what it meant to become a great leader in this country. And I think the President Bush and Barbara embodied that for our country. So I think it's important to remember that legacy. It's important to teach people about what it means to be committed and dedicated to public service. Their legacy is one of decency, honor, and I've always told my kids, if you want a role model in life, George Bush should be your role model. My dad was a spectacular father and a, a great friend. And he treated people, everybody the same. He treated them with dignity and respect. He's an inspiration in so many ways just because of the kindness he would show people. He was humble. He never figured out that he was the most important person in the room. He would say, oh my gosh, there's Tom Brady. And everybody else in the room would be saying, oh my gosh, there's George Bush. The man had a really big heart. But there was also his loyalty because he cared deeply about those people who had made a commitment to him. He invited us all to be optimistic, to recognize the good in life and to make a difference. And making a difference is getting involved. Be a part of something, be a part of the community, give to others. I mean, that's the way to do it. And, and it, it comes naturally. You gotta be in the game. Get off the bench, get in the game. My grandmother is an amazing lady. I would say this, there's no President George H.W. Bush without Barbara Bush. I think what made them a good team was they were just so different. My grandfather was sweet, kind, very slow to, to reprimand. My grandmother was the opposite. She was what we called her the enforcer in our family. Yeah, that was her nickname. My mom's nickname was the Enforcer for good reason. How her eyes draw the line? <laughs> Barbara Bush was the same way she was when the cameras were on. <laughs> you wouldn't like me by the horse's head. <laughs> she is a, a lot more direct than her husband. I, I absolutely adored her, adored her, and loved to parry with her. She had a fabulous sense of humor, and it was always fun that repartee with her, and she was just fantastic. I think that President and Mrs. Bush had a true partnership. And frankly, that's why it's the George and Barbara Bush Foundation, because Mrs. Bush was by his side. She was a true partner, and his success was because of all she did to support him. It's very unusual at the highest levels of American politics for families to be as cohesive and fundamentally as healthy as the Bushes are. And I put an enormous amount of credit on Barbara Bush's side of the ledger. Congratulations, thank you. As we walked out to say goodbye to President Reagan, the uh, Sergeant at Arms of the House said, Mr. President, and I'm standing there waiting for President Reagan. 
and I feel something that was between an affectionate hug and a kidney punch. The silver fox telling me to get going. My mom and dad were a team. Uh, without Barbara Bush, I don't think George H.W. Bush would have attained the highest political position in the land. Because you can't think of one without the other. They had different strengths that maybe you want to say defined them. But ultimately, what defined them was they were one. Their lives are so intertwined. George H.W. Bush was, uh, wasn't a politician his whole life. He got involved in political life uh, at the age of 40. They had lived in I don't know how many cities and in how many houses. I don't think she ever complained. She was just supportive. If you want to do this, I'm there for you. As long as we as a country want to understand the nature of sound governance, starting with George H.W. Bush is an excellent place to begin. He was the very finest one-term president this country has ever had, and one of the finest presidents of all time. If you look at the accomplishments of his presidency, I think you'd have to agree with that. The world we live in today is the result of his actions as president of the United States. The fact that we are facing a Russia rather than the Soviet Union without a major war. That was because of George H.W. Bush. There's a unified Germany almost solely because of George H.W. Bush. He put together that uh, extraordinary coalition that uh, reversed Iraq's aggression against Kuwait. Mr. President, our warmest congratulations on the brilliant victory of the Desert Storm operation. President Bush understood that politics is so much about establishing relationships and engendering trust. So those relationships really came into play into us transitioning into a, a peaceful and better era in the world. George Bush had this philosophy, if you show up and you're diligent, people will come to know you, to trust you and respect you, and you can get things done. Those relationships that he built came to bear in successfully passing landmark legislation like the Clean Air Act and the Americans with Disabilities Act. Anybody who's on a sidewalk today and sees a ramp to the street instead of a curb owes it to George H.W. Bush. We are living with the consequences, and they are almost all positive consequences of his presidency. The legacy of George and Barbara Bush is incredible. The president wanted to create an opportunity for students to prepare themselves to do lives of public service. Public service is a noble calling. It's worth doing and worth trying to succeed in. I think he saw the Bush School as maybe his most significant legacy of generations of young people going into public service in a nonpartisan way to do the public's business. And that's why I think he thought it was so important. When I think about President Bush's legacy, it aligns completely with our core value of selfless service. We're so fortunate that he selected Texas A&M as his home. One of the things that we're so excited about is the growth of the Bush School. There's now undergraduates, there's now a PhD program. We've added a new campus in Washington, D.C. And at a time that we need the best and brightest serving government now more than ever, I think the Bush School is on the cutting edge of that. The fact that President Bush believed that the most honorable thing you could do in the world is public service translates to, the, to these students and I think raises their goals as well. The most important thing we can learn from them is that what unites us is still more powerful than what divides us. George and Barbara Bush were builders. They were civil, they were decent. That legacy is essential to keeping the American spirit and the American mission alive. Supporting the foundation gives us the support to be as effective as we possibly can in getting that legacy out to people because that legacy is so important today. 
whenever Americans want to see what are the possibilities of the American presidency, what are the possibilities of American politics in a limited world, go study the Bushes.